So now I'm going to turn it over to Chana and Archer. Awesome. Thank you. I am going to go ahead and get my sharing going. So I, good evening to all my fellow speeches and educators. I'm excited to have you all here today. And it's so exciting to see people from all over um, and individuals with a lot of different um, speech therapists from and educators that work in a variety of settings. So um, I am a SOP. I have worked, this is actually the start of my 14th year. I actually got um, started a little bit later in life as an SLP. I worked in social services prior. I also um, work in the private setting. I have a small private practice um, where I see students, mostly students with apraxia and um, AAC devices. I've worked with kiddos from preschool all the way to transition aged. Um, I currently work for Coronado Unified School District um, in San Diego, California. And um, I am full-time as a speech therapist. I'm also the ATAAC specialist for the district, um, creator and owner of um, A Gift of Speech. And then I am a human member of a therapy dog team. Um, shown in this picture is um, my SL pathologist. This is Chewy. And um, he and I are actually going to start visiting our preschool this year. And hopefully um, he will be coming to school with me more permanently over this next year. So why I love Boom Cards. So I have to tell you that I am a bit of a technology nerd. Um, I love technology. I actually remember using the original iPad in therapy. And it actually, um, it didn't even have a camera on it. So that, it, those of you who have been using iPads for a while, if you remember those, um, I always loved using apps with students and always wanted to create interactive activities of my own. I actually wanted to create my own apps, but, um, and even looked into it, but really didn't have the resources at the time. It was very expensive to get apps created, um, you know, eight, 10 years ago. So I actually started creating digital activities for teacher pay teachers. Um, and so I made these interactive PDFs, which I loved creating. Um, but I noticed that, you know, there were some limits to the functionality. And honestly, they were really, really time consuming to make. Um, so when I heard about, I had heard about Boom Learning, but it really honestly wasn't until COVID that I really got to you see the versatility of the activities. Um, I think COVID taught all of us to use skills that we didn't know we had. And um, Boom Cards is one of these. I was talking with uh, um, ladies at Boom earlier and I was just talking about how Boom Cards really saved me during um, teletherapy. Um, I had not done teletherapy before and it was something very new. And so I used Boom Cards quite a bit. So as I've transitioned back, um, I've actually brought these resources back in person. Um, I really love how I can use Boom Cards across a variety of ages and goal areas. I can purchase activities for a small fee or I make them um, on my own. It is a whole lot cheaper and a lot less time consuming than creating an app. So I have really, over the last um, year and a half, just fallen in love with Boom. And I see that there are individuals from a wide range, um, those that work in the school, those that work in clinics, um, special education um, uh, schools, as well as other. And I've worked just in just about each one of those. So um, tonight I'm gonna talk about how I've used Boom Cards and how you can use Boom Cards across a lot of different settings. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, using Boom Cards and teletherapy, how I've used them with individuals in my individual therapy, and um, in person in targeted groups and mixed groups. So when I mean targeted groups versus mixed groups, um, in the school setting, when I have a group of kids, I really try to um, put my groups together so that I have all my language at one time, all my articulation at one time. Um, and I like to get that targeted in that way, but honestly, that just 
doesn't always happen. Um, so sometimes we have these mixed groups and that can be really challenging to make sure that we have activities that we can meet everybody's needs. So I'm gonna give you a, um, an example of a way that I use a boom card deck with a variety of um, actually targets. So this first video I wanna show you is, um, is, is of me doing, um, I think it was this, this last summer, it was during ESY, um, I had a student that um, was um, accessing the majority of her um, curriculum still in, via teletherapy. And I wanna show you this video and then we can talk a little bit about what was happening. Yeah, it does look like a baby animal. Yeah, it does. Those are baby animal. Baby. Tadpole. That's right. The tadpole is a baby animal. It's a baby frog. Those are lots of great sea. A sea urchin and a sea animal. Let's go back to our ocean where we see, yes, those are animals that live in the ocean. Awesome. So I wanted to show you all this because this is an awesome example of a student learning language facilitated by Boom Cards. But let's not forget it is, it's really about us facilitating and making these activities productive. So this student was actually using an eye gaze device. I had her communication partner help her navigate to the page. And then we actually practice navigating to the animals. I knew that she could navigate to the animals page, but she wasn't, um, she hadn't gone beyond that to, to go within that subcategories of animals. So we practiced that. And then if you'll notice during this clip that the student was talking about tadpoles and baby animals, she also started talking about other ocean animals. Now this was a fairly new student, so I didn't know 100% what she could and could not do with her device, but I assumed competence and used her choices to facilitate our conversation. So she was choosing all kinds of different animals. So I, I took that and I went back within this boom card deck and used that to facilitate our conversation. We ended up talking about all sorts of animals and she got some much some much needed practice with her talker. And it was just so much fun to see how we could use an activity that wasn't necessarily specifically created for um, AAC or eye gaze, but we were able to use this via teletherapy with eye gaze and really do some strong language work. It was really a lot of fun and awesome to see. So for those of you who have done teletherapy or are doing teletherapy, you know that our students have different ways to access. Sometimes the student doesn't have um, mouse control and some may not know how to use a mouse yet. So we wanna make sure and give them alternatives. So I have to say that um, when we started with teletherapy, I was like, how am I gonna do this if a kid can't access these cards? Um, and what I actually ended up finding out, and I'm, I'm now at a point where I have to say I prefer when my students don't have mouse control because it creates so many opportunities to actually facilitate expressive language. So depending on the student, I may have them ask for the item. So if they don't have mouse control, or sometimes I will pretend that the mouse control is broken, broken and that I can't give them access, and I might use that as an opportunity just to work on those, those language skills. So I might ask them to name the item. I might ask them to um, describe the item. I also might give them multiple choices. So depending on the boom card deck that you're, you're using and how it's set up, sometimes um, you know, we can give them a, multiple choices. We can use fill in the blank sentences, or we can use that opportunity for them to describe items, give us directions. So I have to say that now I really, um, I really like to use them without mouse control. So a lot of times I don't even let students know that, that it's actually, um, actually an option. So when I'm using boom cards, sometimes it'll be the main activity. Um, 
and sometimes it's as a reinforcer. So what I mean by that is if I'm using as a main activity, that could be, um, and I'll show you some of the activities um, in a little bit, but our, what we're doing is, and the questions and the responses are, are actually within that, that boom card deck. Sometimes what I'll do is I will use a boom card deck that is more of a general reinforcer. Maybe it's just, um, you know, a create a scene, or maybe it's um, just um, a puzzle or, or a um, game board. And I will use those and pair those with, say, um, some of the flashcards that I have, or I'll take out one of my, um, my big super duper um, articulation book and for targets. And that also allows me to apply it for a variety of goal areas. So let's talk about um, boom cards with the individual student in person. So I see students privately and I love to integrate boom cards into our sessions. Um, I, I have to say that for me, this is actually the easiest scenario to plan for um, because I can go specifically to a boom card deck that is specifically geared to my um, students' needs. So sometimes I'll use it as the primary activity or include it as one of the activities during a session, really just depends on the student and how long that activity takes. So this is an activity um, that is working on articulation. I am working with a student that's um, one of my private kiddos. We're using an iPad Pro. I have this awesome iPad. Um, and we're targeting CH and initial. So this is a kiddo that I've worked with for probably about four years. Um, and she has apraxia. Um, but we're at the point where we're working on, in with mastered sounds, we're working to, with five to seven syllable sentences and short phrases. And right now we're introducing, she's got about three um, phonemes that she's still struggling with. Um, S C H L and R. I'll admit I left R for last because that's going to be um, that's the, it's a challenge. So um, we're in this in this session right now. We're actually just working on some C H and initial. Okay, so we're going to put some it's, animals out there. Good. Let's see what's underneath it. Chocolate. Okay, let's try that again. Chocolate. Chocolate. That was a much better C H. Good job getting that in there. Oh, I found an elephant. And the word is cherries. Oh, let's get that ch cherries. Cherry. So, um, as you could hear, there were some other, there were some L's, there were some R's, but we weren't really worried about that. Um, we're just we're really working on that ch sound, and um, she really loved the fact that she could um, move the items and place them around. Typically, what I would do is I would have her also create short sentences about what she's doing, but she was just kind of on a roll. And um, sometimes we'd had some earlier behavior. So I was like, hey, this is awesome. Um, I was just um, targeting those CH because I was trying to keep everybody okay, happy. So we're going to put. OK, so here's an example of another student that I'm seeing in person. And in this situation, we are working on prepositions. So let's watch this real quick. Put the bird above the mountain. Good job. So the bird's above the mountain. The fish is swimming below the mountain. Can you move him below? Oh, that's above. Yep, there we go, he's in the ocean. So this is a kiddo that, um, when I was seen during, during the session, we actually had an activity where we started, I had a couple toys and we were working on some of the um, propositions. So we were doing some um, activities. I literally, we were putting things above the chair, below the chair, on the sofa, on the floor. Um, and so we were practicing those um, with um, real, act, real items. And then we went to this boom card activity so that we could also work on it in a different setting. And um, this was, prepositions were really, this is very new skill for him. So I was doing a lot of prompt and a lot of support. Um, 
but it was a great way for me to take an activity that we were working on and work on it in a little bit different way so that we could work on that generalization and um, practicing things in a different environment. So for this kiddo, um, I was using this as um, a secondary activity. Now, having a library, I found that having a library of boom cards is perfect for those situations where your plans don't quite work out the way you'd hoped. I know none of y'all have experienced that where you have this great therapy plan and it just gets blown to bits and you're like, okay, what do I do now? So um, I always love to have, um, you know, some boom cards that I know I can pull for a student when, um, because you just don't know what's going to happen. And then sometimes, you know, you'll get done with an activity even quicker than you thought. And so having another um, activity that you can pull from that's easy to pull from is um, really, really um, helps with um, just going from one activity to the next. And making sure that your therapy Put session the birds above keeps the mountain going. okay so using boom cards with groups so i work in a school full time and i have a mixed caseload of preschool to fifth grade i also support our students with aac devices and at accommodations so not only do i use boom cards in my speech room but I share strategies and activities with teammates so that they can facilitate language and have fun. So I love to have some of my um, teachers or paraeducators, I, I show them some boom cards that they can use when they're um, working on some AAC activities and just a variety of different things that they can use. So you've got something that's fun and interactive um, but they can use um, in different ways and that it's not just in the speech room. So I, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier with our groups, um, you know, I love it when I can get all of my Arctic kids in one group, love it if I can get all my R's and, you know, S's and that, that normally doesn't happen, but I'm happy when I can at least get um, more of a, you know, my language and maybe language pragmatic or my Arctic in one, but that just doesn't always happen. So what I want to show you is how I might, how I use a boom card deck with a mixed group in person and um, with a variety of goals. So I'm going to pull up a boom card deck. So this is um, a feed the animals activity. I love these. Um, and I started creating these when I saw that they had these moving gifts. And I, I have to admit, um, I like them probably as much as the kid. I think I'm a kid when I create these sometimes. So let's say, so I'm gonna um, kind of give you a scenario of a group that I've had before. So let's say that you have a group with a student that is working on S, one working on categories, and one that's working on fluency and we're practicing slides. So first of all, um, I'm gonna choose categories because that um, is at least one of our students. We're getting some um, good targets right here on the screen. And we're gonna name our sea creature, Sam. And I'm gonna have my articulation student choose an item. And I might have him say, um, feed Sam the fish or feed Sam the shell. So that way we're working on um, getting that S in a short repetitive phrase. And then say he chooses um, the sea anemone. I might, if he doesn't know the name, um, I know some kids, I don't know that I would know the name sea anemone. Um, I might have him describe that item for me. So he's gonna tell me to feed Sam the pink sea anemone. So underneath this, it may not be a target of his. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I have a list of target words that I'm gonna use with him. So I'm gonna actually give him the target and we're gonna practice that target word. Um, depending on where he's at, we're gonna do multiple practice. Um, we might do a short phrase, might do a sentence. So now with my language kiddo, I'm going to have him describe the item he wants to feed to the sea creature. Um, now I started putting numbers on the side of these just because sometimes 
um, some of my kiddos um, are uh, just as an additional tool when you're um, um, using these and when kids don't have mouse control, just as an additional tool for people to say, oh, the one in number six. Um, and I, I did this because I have some kiddos that um, have severe expressive um, concerns and it just, it, it was challenging them for them to be able to su be successful in choosing something. So I put that in there for students as a way of kind of giving them an alternative to choose the items. So with my language kiddo, I'm gonna have him describe the item that he wants to feed the sea creature. I may them may have him make a sentence depending on what his age or skill level is, um, but more than likely I'm gonna have him um, or her describe the item. So say he says the yellow fish. So I'm like, okay, awesome. So I'm gonna feed Sam the yellow fish. Ah, what's underneath it? Then we're going to talk about clock and then you know what group or category is this in and then i might ask him to tell me something else that is in that category so i'm going to add, add some add-on questions as well for the student so then for my fluency student i'm going to have him choose an item and use a sentence and say i am feeding sam using easy starts and light contacts because those are a couple things that we've been working on so say he's choosing the purple fish. So underneath it is cookie. So we are also um, working on slides. So I might say, hey, let's create a sentence with cookie. And what I want you to do is I want you to do a pseudo stutter on cookie and I want to hear bumpy speech and then let's practice sliding out of it. So um, this target then becomes the word that we can use for um, practicing his stutter. So with this one boom deck, I was able to address a, a variety of goals. So not only can we use boom cards in a, with a variety of goals, but we can also use them in a variety of, um, variety of ways. So I was observing a student for an evaluation and I saw this kindergarten team, one of my kindergarten teachers doing something that was so brilliant. So our schools don't have, um, I call them magic whiteboards, but they are interactive whiteboards. Um, but I'm hopeful one day. Um, so what this teacher did was she projected the boom cards onto a board and then let the students take turns with the magic pointer. I had to laugh as I saw the teacher manipulating the boom card deck from her computer. Um, while the student used the magic pointer. I was like, why did I not think of this? This is so brilliant. So when I'm in person, I sometimes put the boom cards on my overhead screen. Overhead screen. I now have my own magic speech pointer and a wireless mouse. This way I can take the mouse to the speech table as there's a little bit of space between where my speech table is and my computer. I also talked to my ed tech person from my site and asked if she had a wireless keyboard. So she found one for me, it's big, old and clunky, but it is perfect for my magic whiteboard. So I'm gonna show you a little clip of my magic. So I don't have a magic whiteboard. whiteboard. What I do have though, is I have an overhead projector and this is how I use boom carts. So what item do you want? So we have our new magic pointer. So then I have a wireless mouse, oops. You wanted the umbrella. Where would you like me to put it? Okay, how about beside the pool? What do you want next? Oh, the dog and the float. Where should we put them? In the pool or beside the pool? In the pool. Awesome. Okay, so this video shows a short clip of me and a coworker demonstrated demonstrating my magic. Um, speech board. Now my coworker didn't want to talk in the video. So you just hear me. I realized that I should have brought her coffee or some baked goods. So normally what I would do is I would have the student describe the item like the umbrella. I might have them label the name of the item and then I'd be like, well, where do you want me to put it? And then um, what I oftentimes do is I will pretend that I didn't hear them or I might um, I might put it in the pool 
and say, oh, wait, did you want me to put that in the pool? And then they're like, no, 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 I wanted you to put it beside the pool. So um, I'm gonna use this opportunity to have the student give me directions. So another thing um, that I do is I use an iPad or a laptop um, in group. So because I'm the AAC specialist, I have a really nice iPad, but I didn't always. Um, a couple of years ago, our gen ed teachers at my school were getting new iPads. So trust me, I asked if I was getting new iPads, but it was a grant and a speech therapist wasn't included. Pretty typical, but I figured that that meant there were some older ones that weren't going to be used. So I asked if I could get a couple of the older ones and I put some reinforcers on them and a few older speech applications. So I have these four old iPads that I can use during group sessions. They're all so old that now because of all the iOS updates, none of the speech apps will actually work on them. But that's okay because Boom cards work perfectly. They're able to um, um, use the internet. So I just get them on um, the Chrome or Internet Explorer. And then they're actually able to use the Boom cards on the, um, this old, these old iPads. So I can have students use the Boom cards independently while I, might, I work with another student. Um, sometimes I'll have them, uh, students work in pairs. Um, this is great for articulation kiddos that need to practice um, self-monitoring. So I might have, say, I have these two students that are working on ours, and um, I might have them actually even sharing an iPad and um, checking and listening for the other person. So if you have an interactive whiteboard, I am very jealous, but that's a great way to use Boom cards. Um, but if you don't, there's a lot of different alternatives for using boom cards in your group settings. So as I talked a little bit about before, I use boom cards as a reinforcer or general activity targeted to specific goals and a little bit of both. Another activity um, that I love to use is a, this is a, sorry, sometimes moving from screen to screen. Okay, just having to move stuff around a little bit. Is, so this is actually one of my students' favorites is, um, so I could actually use this generalized reinforcer. This is a general reinforcer. I, this is um, an app um, by David Sindri. He has a ton of, um, sorry, boom deck. He has a ton of great boom decks. And this is a general reinforcer. I think he recently put this out with all of the sound um, with it. And so um, I have a student that literally, this is the only thing I can get to actually get her to. Um, it's, the, it's like our main thing. So I was very excited when it came out with um, sounds as well. So this, you know, underneath it, there's not really necessarily any speech targets or sounds or language questions, but there's a lot of language opportunities within this. But then I also, what I will do is I will have, say, I might have another um, boom card deck that I'm working on that has specific tasks. So I might go between those two, um, or I might use some of the materials that I have. I might use... Um, some flashcards that I have or some um, principles I have to use those as questions. And then this just might be a game that we play. So um, this, is, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, and the scary thing is I've played this so many times and I still don't know where the crackers are. Um, it's pretty bad. But so I had, um, a few people that asked how I could use, how they could use boom cards with older students. So I wanted to show you this um, boom card deck by Stacy Krause. And this is um, a, a boom deck that's gonna be working on inferencing, problem solving, emotions, predictions. And you can kind of see just the way that it's structured that it's probably gonna be more appropriate for our older students. So this is great to work on um, those 
higher level language skills. And what I typically do when I'm working with my older students is that I will use some sort of reinforcer along with it, because honestly, sometimes it can get a little um, dry and I want to keep my students um, interested and motivated. So sometimes I'll go to a boom card deck. Another thing that I, um, I actually learned this from my um, intern I had this last year. And this is like one of the best um, general reinforcers. Um, generalized is she actually does Pictionary. She literally just sits there and draws pictures and the kids have to guess it. And the crazy thing was that my young kiddos loved it and our older students loved it. So um, for our older students, you know, when you look at what is available there, um, you know, there's some great um, boom card decks that have language tasks or you can do what, um, you know, sometimes I'll do, which is choose a general reinforcer and then um, ask some of your own questions and um, use some of your own materials. So another thing that I love to do um, in my speech groups is um, using a create a scene. So in um, San Diego, where I live, we don't have a lot of seasons. I really shouldn't complain because um, we have amazing weather about 364 days out of the year, but I will tell you, I miss the seasons. So when I'm actually trying to work on seasonal activities, I find I have to go a little bit over and above because some of my kids who've been here for a while or um, you know, are from here, they're not used to seeing a lot of the season. So this is an activity um, that I really enjoy using where it's, um, it's the create a scene. It can be used as a general reinforcer, but it can also just be used to work on some speech and language tasks. Um, you know, what is the person doing? What group does the item belong from? The student, um, they're going to have to, I'm going to ask them, what, what item do you want to put on, on the, on the fair scene? Um, describe it to me. So, when I create these, a lot of times I'll try to put things like, notice how there's three pumpkins. Well, what this does is it kind of forces the kiddos to tell me which pumpkin do they want? Do they want the small pumpkin or the big pumpkin? Um, and if say they were to tell me, you know, I want the big pumpkin, then I could say, well, where would you like to put the pumpkin? And okay, on the table. Now, something, sometimes what I'll do too, sometimes, you know, the kids will be silly and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to put the kid on top of the pumpkin. And then this is actually a great opportunity for us to talk about why that might not be a good idea. But some days what we'll do is I will let the kids know that we are having wacky create a scene day. And that means that we try to make it as silly as possible. And then that gives us that opportunity to talk about um, what's wrong or what's silly? Why is that silly? Um, so it just opens up um, a, for a lot of other great questions. So, um, so I hope that you leave tonight with um, just some new, um, some just some new fun ways that you can use boom cards. Because honestly, these are great no matter the age of your students, your clients, or how you work with them. So as a speech therapist who is um, working across settings, I have found that these have just been such a great tool for me to use from my young kiddos to my old kiddos, um, in person, online, as well as um, with my groups at school. So thank you guys all for coming. And I think um, now we're going to have some questions. And I know that there's probably limited time for questions. So um, I put my contact information if you'd like to email me. And um, if you would like to watch Chewy's um, um, as he becomes a speech therapy um, dog, please feel free to join me over on Instagram. Um, you probably see a lot more pictures of Chewy. I, I do occasionally put some speech related stuff, but I'll admit I do put a lot of Chewy there as well. So thank you all for coming. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and I think there um, gives some time for some questions.
Yeah, thank you very much, Shannon. That was amazing. So we have some uh, questions. We have one that you have uh, like mentioned in your presentation, but we're just going to uh, read it anyway. Is are we able to use the interactive uh, touch screen boom cards on a smart board? I don't have one in my room, but the special education teachers do have one. You know, I think it depends on the type of board that you have. Um, some of the boards um, can, like if it's, you know, depending on how you interact with it. Um, so one of um, the other sites in our district, the SPED teachers have the boards that we don't. And what we actually did is um, we um, used a mouse and we had a wireless mouse that we used with the interactive whiteboard. So I have to say, I haven't been able to play with it very often, um, but I think it just depends on the type of board you have as to whether it's touch or whether or not um, you use some sort of mouse control with it. Perfect. So we have another one from Jane and it says, how long does it take you to create a deck typically and where do you get the picture from? Yeah, awesome, great question. Um, so it depends, um, making a deck kind of depends on, on what I'm doing. Some of them, um, so I can sometimes create a deck, um, a simple deck in a couple hours and some decks take a lot longer. Um, I have some decks that are similar but I'll change depending on seasons um, and so that, kind of cuts down on the time, but also um, I already, I think when you first start making the decks, it can take a little bit of time um, learning. And I think because I've been doing it for a little while, I'm definitely much quicker. Um, and then I um, purchase, so you can actually get um, the images on Boom Learning. And then I also buy some of mine on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, I'll admit I'm a little bit of a clip part um, collector, so I love um, having a ton of images. So I have a ton of images to make a ton of stuff. I just don't have enough time to make it all, so. <laughs> Thank you. So we have another one from Susan, and is um, how do you know which boom cards are the best to buy, uh, like with your own money? Yeah, and actually, that's actually a really good question because I create my own and I do buy, I mean, if, if you saw my library, you'd be like, whoa. So I, I do buy them as well. So one of the things is looking into the preview. Um, there, you know, there's a, um, a preview where you can look at the first um, four cards. Um, and I will, I will admit if, if I can't see um, a good preview in that, then I don't, I don't purchase it. Um, because I'm also a creator, I'm probably also a little bit more picky. Um, I like, you know, I, I'm picky about the images that they use, but really spend, spend time and looking at it. And sometimes some creators will actually have videos of the items as well, videos in play. I try to make videos of um, a bunch of mine just so people can see what does it look like? Because when you are spending your own money, you want to make sure that it's, it's worthwhile. And then honestly, I, um, I also do, um, I know some, some other um, boom card creators, that I like their things. And so I'll typically go back to those, but I also sometimes will see some new things on there. And so then I'll go check it out and then um, kind of make that decision from there. Perfect. So uh, we have another one and it's where can we find the feed, this, this fish activity you showed during the presentation? Yeah, actually. So um, if you go to Boom Learning um, and you can actually visit my store um, and it is um, called Feed the Ocean Animals. And um, I'll admit that a lot of times um, my students know now that I'll typically I start singing um, baby shark just about every time I open up. <laughs> so because on one of the on the one of the animals that you feed is a shark so yeah so uh we have one from Nastasha and it is uh 
were you able to try and assign some decks to the kids and monitor their progress? This is so amazing, she mentioned. Yeah, so I actually, I had some students that I did um, assign decks to. Now, one of, I think the differences between like, speech therapists and our deck, some of our decks and say some of like say a math deck where you have very specific answers so some of the boom cards that i create um don't necessarily have um like say the fit the feed the ocean animals it doesn't necessarily have a correct or incorrect so it wouldn't necessarily monitor or log that what i could though is i would um you know, I would be able to know if the families accessed it. Now, some of the other activities, um, some that I've created and some that I've purchased from others, they're actually, um, you know, correct or incorrect answers. So then what you're able to do is go back and look. So I have a, a kiddo that I see via telepractice and I don't see this kiddo very often. And so what I did is I started assigning um, boom card decks. And so the mom works with the student and then I'm actually able to see how he's doing. And then that helps for that next session. Um, so kind of um, knowing what we're going to work on next. Yeah. Uh, and also, if you create uh, like student accounts in boom, you can send them the credentials to their uh, accounts. We have single sign-on with Clever, uh, Google, and Microsoft. And if you assign them using a hyperplay link, uh, you'll be able to recollect that data and also see uh, live uh, monitoring, like live reports while they are playing the, the decks. So that's another thing uh, that you can do to, you know, see reports and have and use the boom reports. Um, so I have another one that says, have you tried sharing uh, your screen, uh, your boom cards in Zoom, like uh, sharing the screen in Zoom? Uh, how do you deal with the difficult of kids manipulating it through this uh, medium? Yeah, so I, um, so I have, I, I have some students that can access um, and um, I can give them mouse control or I can let them make comments. Um, but um, there are a lot of times that, um, so our district mainly used Chromebooks. And so with a Chromebook, they're not gonna be able to necessarily move items around. Um, but it, so in that case, that's where I like to, I, I use that kind of to the advantage of what kind of language um, can we get when a student can't uh, manipulate the item themselves. So it's actually perfect for um, trying to get a little bit more, um, um, more out of a student. Now, like I said, I've, I've had some kiddos that have had, um, you know, such a variety of expressive language skills that sometimes there's, you know, there's not, um, you know, they may not be able to tell me the name of the item. So that's where I'm like, um, what color is it? Or I might ask them um, things um, like, um, um, sorry, my uh, daughter's at the front door, um, knocking on the door, so sorry. Um, so I might, you know, I'm going to use that situation and just really work on having some, um, some language tasks or using, um, asking things, you know, I've, I've had kiddos that have done both. Um, sometimes kiddos using the mouse and maneuvering things on their own is great. Sometimes it causes issues. And so that's where sometimes I will actually not, um, not use the mouse. Perfect. And so we have like our last question and it says, where can we find the social stories uh, boom course deck from this presentation? Like, it seems like everyone is interested in all the decks that you've shared. Yeah. So um, the, the Stacy Kraus, um, let me see if I can get the name of that. Let me look just one second. I think I've shared, I share the link to the full uh, boom cards deck of yours okay. in the chat section. So we can also send there uh, in the chat 
the yeah. Stacey Krause one and the David Sindri, I think we also shared. So, yep, um, understanding social situations. Um, that's by Stacy Krause. And then the other one um, is the language adventures by Power Speech and Language. Okay. And I wanted to share some of the different, you know, some of the, because honestly, they're such great. I mean, I love the ones I make, but honestly, you know, there's certain things like with older students, that's not my that's not my forte when it comes to creating. And so, um, and I'm always looking for some good stuttering and fluency ones as well, because that's just, that's not my expertise. So, um, and I'll actually, um, yeah, I can put a link um, in the chat or you can also send me an email and I'll be happy to um, send the, the ones that um, I used, that I showed, whatever would be easier you guys think. Okay, well, thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, thank you, everyone, for from jo for joining. Uh, so, I'm going to share real real quick my screen to show you how you can get help if you have any more questions. Uh, we're uh, able to help you via email. You can uh, call us. I'm going to be sharing my screen to show you how to how you can do that. So uh, from any part of our um, platform, you can go to the help blue button down here and you can type whatever you want to. In this case, I'm just going to type webinar calendar. You click, you're going to be uh, able to see the different FAQs that we have about that specific topic. So I encourage you uh, with this example, I encourage you to join and register for our uh, next webinars. We're going to be having tomorrow, we're going to be having a webinar for schools. So if you want your school to purchase boom cards for you, make sure you tell them that tomorrow we're going to be having um, that, here it goes, that, uh, webinar for schools uh, answering all of the questions about boom cards and how a school can purchase boom cards for their educators we'll also be having a webinar in spanish and many more to come so here from this page from the faqs you're going to be able to create a support ticket which send us an email for us to help you you also find our phone number that you can call us uh, if you go, uh, you can also schedule a call. If you find that, you can find that in the FAQ section, schedule a call and we will call you in that specific date and time. So if you go um, from the platform, if you go to settings and then help center, you'll be able to see like different FAQs, a blog and terms of services and a few other things. But here I wanted to show you, oops, I wanted to show you that here's where you can create that help ticket that will send us an email and we'll be helping you. So make sure you have your email, um, the subject, the and here you can type what your issue is, the group, if it's customer service, finance, and all that, uh, and then send uh, the ticket and we'll be helping you as soon as possible. Uh, in the chat, we're going to be having the uh, feedback survey link. So if you can fill that up, it will be super uh, helpful for us. Uh, we can learn from your feedback. Uh, also, as a reminder, we are recording, we were recording this webinar, so you'll be able to access that recording uh, via YouTube, our Facebook page, or in the follow-up email that you'll be receiving after this webinar. Uh, so now let's quickly review what we learned today. So in this webinar, how to use Boom for speech therapy, we learned uh, how to use Boom cards to address individual goals for clinic and home-based therapy. We also learned how to use Boom cards with individuals and or groups in the school setting, how to use Boom cards for telepractice from preschool to transition, and some tips on how to differentiate activities with mixed groups. Also, 
that is it for today. Thank you again, Shannon, for joining us. And thank you all for uh, being here with us. We're super grateful uh, that you attend this webinar. And make sure you don't miss the next uh, ones that are coming. So uh, thank you and have a good day. Bye. Bye.